Star Tribune found a significant racial bias in identification of special education needs. For example, white children were found far more likely to be class classified as autistic, while black children were far more likely to be classified EBD, or Emotional Behavior Disorder. What do you think is causing this outcome, and what should the school board do about it? Well, again, what the school board needs to continue to work on in the district is, as we mentioned earlier, wraparound services. We need to additionally begin to bring in more wraparound services, more support for students who need and are identified as children who need additional help. Taking the pressure off of the teachers, also identifying smaller classroom sizes where we can, and that way we help that student individually with their program so that we can see that we can help them out. And so that's why key is, is getting more and more wraparound services into our community schools to help these students so that they can be helped, so all students have the chance to learn. I'm also very anxious to see the role of the new behavior plan that's being implemented by the school district. I think he, uh, whenever there is assessment, whether it's academic assessment, what's the health care evaluations, I think we need to have uh, honest, uh, non-biased evaluators. We have to have, uh, we have to try to have a zero bias. But uh, as you are aware, that even in the graduation rate, the student of color, it's very low. It's about 40%. I think that's unacceptable. When it comes to healthcare, I'm not in a profession of healthcare. I will seek an advice from professionals who are pioneer in this field. And I will do everything in my power to make sure that we use the resource available to have a non-biased results, evaluations. It, it, it's, uh, and I do believe Minneapolis, we have all the necessary resources if we use wisely. It's, 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 it's very sad to hear this uh, uh, question, or in other words, this report. And I hope that that will not happen in my watch. There are clearly biases in our assessment, our diagnoses, and our interventions that have led to this result. My observation over time and my experience as a social worker tells me that sometimes undiagnosed mental health needs, um, for example, untreated trauma, leads to inappropriate special education placements. At the end of the day, it's really important that we have high quality assessments, early in inter interventions for students, and so we support and train our teachers. The school board recently passed an equity and diversity policy that really clearly states our values and takes steps to end these inequitable practices. And in the process, we are also, we are in the process of re-examining our funding practices, which will reallocate resources in a different way to students with the highest needs. Well, it needs to stop right away as soon as possible. And I think that this is a clear cut case of what we mean when we say institutional racism or bias. Um, so uh, the kind of thing where you're not conscious of your bias and you make decisions because of your bias that affect um, students in this case uh, in a really detrimental way. So what needs to happen is we need to be acknowledging this bias when we're doing our special ed evaluations. So when we're having IEP meetings, uh, there needs to be a process, a step in the process where we acknowledge the potential for racial bias. And families need to be educated about that potential as well so that they can advocate for themselves um, in such a way as to prevent those biases from occurring. Um, every year, every semester when you do those IEP evaluations, you need to have a, in the process an acknowledgement of the potential for racist, racial bias in that um, evaluation.